Welcome to How's Your E-Presence? This show is produced by E-Presence, and I am Mark Galvin, the founder and president of that firm. We are always glad to have you here with us, and you know what we do here. We always like to try to help you solve a marketing issue or solve an advertising issue, or maybe, maybe there's something new in the digital space that you don't know about. We like sharing that with you here. Our goal is to give you new intelligence that you can apply in your business. When you want to come back here and you're looking for something new, you can always ask a question. Literally go into YouTube and ask a question. How do I fill in the blank? And we want to answer that fill in the blank. So example, we've recently had a had a show where we answered the question, how do you scale up e-commerce shops? Actually, we've had two people talk about e-commerce recently. Um, also, how can you use data analytics to find your target market? Now, that is huge. We all need to know where our target market is. So we're always great at identifying great new topics. If you know someone that should talk to us, let us know. All of our guests typically come to us from a referral, from someone who said, you know what, you ought to talk to someone, and we connect with them and get them onto the show. So if you've got someone, hit us. Our handle is epresence.me, e, or well, that's our website, actually. Our handle is epresence.me. So it's really interesting. Website, epresence.me, handles everywhere e presence me so we keep that branding consistently wherever we go so if you're tuning in we love questions so if you'd like to throw a question up on the screen we will answer it live so feel free to ask anything what are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about audio branding hmm. the sound of branding that's kind of where we're going today why is sound so powerful what are some strange facts about sound? If this sounds interesting to you, hang on. We're going to go into all of that great stuff. When you want to get back to this show in the future, simply search for ePresence. Why is sound so powerful? So check that out. We will, uh, we're will we going to drop that as our title, and you'll be able to track us down in the future. I'm always, and I think a lot of you that are in our network know this, we're looking for subscribers. So please subscribe to the show. And I think it's on this side. Hit that button. There we go. Hit that button down there and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, follow our page. If you're on LinkedIn, follow our company page. That way you get notified when we go live and you can interact with us. Just drop us in the background if you want. Continue your work. Listen to what we're talking about. Say, hey, I got a question about that. Throw one in there. We will answer your questions live. Stay tuned to the end of the show. We're going to talk about the webinar, but we're going to put a banner at the bottom of the page here. That banner will rotate constantly to let you know how you can sign up for a webinar. And again, I'll talk about that at the end of the show. So let's get on with the show. We are going to talk with Jody Krangle. Jody, let's see, where are you? Jody, Hi. welcome. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> I am great. So glad you are here. Thanks for you. Having me. You bet. You are a voice actor. Mm -hmm. This is pretty cool. So what does that mean, being a voice actor? Well, all of the things that you hear in the background of your life that don't have a person actually speaking them to you, <laughs> that's probably a voice actor. <laughs> so the, on and, hold and, commercials, narration yeah. here on web videos, uh, kiosks, the announcements in an airport, there's all sorts of reasons that they'd use so, a voice. You do, you know, I, I live in Atlanta and <laughs> yes. yeah. we've got a big airport, that airport in the city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you get into the, 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 the trains, the mm -hmm. underground trains and that voice throughout the city is kind of made fun of, but that is, that's, there is someone, there was a voice that, Hey, there's a voice yeah. actor for Siri. There totally is. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, and I guess this woman sat down and had to read a whole bunch of words and put them in inflection points and all that fun stuff. That's, that's another intense. interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting right? story. Because I think when she sat down to do that, she had no idea that she would become the voice of Apple. Like she didn't know. What? They didn't tell yeah. her that. <laughs> that's right. It, so, you know, she probably would have charged a lot more if she had known that. Uh, yeah, I think she should have been given a lot more for, you right. know, for that kind of usage. But, you know, tw hindsight's twenty twenty, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> sort of like, do you buy Bitcoin today or later? Uh, who knows? Yeah. So you've worked with great brands, Dell, BBVA, and Kraft. I hear you're a singer, although, folks, she's already agreed she won't sing for us today, <laughs> uh, which is a bummer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can go to the website. You'll hear it. Well, go to the website. And the website. Form. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The website's jodycranglemusic.com. And that's J O D I, the letter I, cranglemusic.com. And you have a podcast. What's your podcast called? It's called Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. <laughs> I like that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that's this is uh, that's a great transition point. Let's jump in there and talk about the things that well th that we're all here today. Oh, and I should have said just one more time: if you're watching live, send us a question. We will answer your questions here live, and that's always Happy a good to thing that. to say because folks will jump in late. Good. Sure. So, audio branding. What is now? I think I know, right? I think I know what audio branding is, but what really is audio branding? It's the audio portion of your brand. And I think a lot of people really pay attention to the visuals of their brand. They're, they have a logo, they have their uh, fonts chosen, they have their colors chosen. They're very conscious about that. And they use it across all of their touch points in their company. And they have like folders on Dropbox or Google or wherever they store these things and they make sure everybody in the company Absolutely. uses that same stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you your audio portion of that is just as important. And if they don't match, people aren't going to trust you and they aren't going to know why. There's going to be this right. disconnect and unconsciously they're not going to realize why they're not really getting what you're putting out there, but they're not. <laughs> so this is, I think this is really interesting and I 100% agree, but if I'm listening to this podcast and, and my feeling is, of course, Jody's going to tell me that audio branding is so important. That's her <laughs> industry, but there's probably more data that supports that. What is it that, how do we know that audio branding is so important? Well, they have done a lot of studies on this and they're doing a lot more of them that hearing is one of our most powerful senses. But you can sort of look around and see how powerful it is. I mean, take Intel. <laughs> you yes. know that sound. You know that that's, sound. We all know that sound. Around oh my God, that's, that's brilliant. That's a, such a good point. And it's part of our being because yeah. of that you know, I, I can't mimic it, but the doo -doo -doo, they do it da -da, at the end of every yeah, single. Yeah, yeah, I would. And when I hear <laughs> it, I know what that you. is. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Who else yeah. has who else out there has a sound? There are others. McDonald's? Well, here's one. Oh, my goodness. I, I have one that I was actually yeah. was a joke on. A, I was talking to a friend last night and yeah. we were. I made a mistake yesterday and uh, and he was making fun of me for it. And he, he called me and he said something about AOL. Oh, yeah. And I said, and as soon as he said that, I said, well, you've got mail. Yes. Yeah. That's always going to be associated with with uh, AOL, I, whether, yeah. you know, well, for our generation, maybe there's probably some folks who don't don't know what they that means. They made a movie about it. <laughs> they did. 100%. Yeah, yeah. There are things out there that are just a part of our consciousness, but it's because the visual was paired with the audio for a certain amount of time. We right. associated them together, and then you get rid of the visual and you still remember the audio. But that audio takes a lot less time to get to our senses. So it's a real emotional shorthand to get right huh. into our, our, our hearts, right? And it's super memorable. So consistency and um, repetition consistent repetition this is That's how this great. kind of thing works and it can take 20 years for it to become as part of our consciousness as say intel and right. the thing that intel did with their advertising was they added their logo both the visual and the audio to the end of every tech commercial that you heard for years <laughs> i mean it must yes. have been 20 years and right. they didn't ever actually have to pay to do an entire commercial themselves because they were always a part of other people's tech brand. But you knew that if that particular piece of tech had Intel, it was quality inside. It was Intel inside. So you started to associate that with quality and with a, a good tech product. 
and it just became a part of everyone's understanding. And then eventually all you had to do was hear it. You didn't have to see anything, right. which means you can hear that anywhere in the world and people know exactly what it is. You don't need to worry That's, about language. It's, it's, yeah. it's an audible touch point. And, and this is a really interesting thing because you, and, and, and I bet there's others out there, but I'm thinking about this one, the Intel side. If somebody rolls out a product, mm -hmm. they're advertising a product, and they go to Intel and say, hey, we want to do your little jingle, whatever they want to call that, that tone at the end. It yep. provides credibility, shows that I have that quality, and that's really impressive. And now... Intel is getting free advertising. I wonder if they paid for any of that. Oh, I'm sure that they did. I'm sure they did. Okay. But, but they didn't have to pay the full price of the ad because the person who was putting their stuff on the end, I mean, what they did to get this started in the first place was that they offered to half pay for the ad <laughs> or Got to it. pay a sure. portion of the ad to be included in the end of it, right? That but they didn't have to buy the whole ad, which could have been really expensive. <laughs> You're right. Unbelievable. So, yeah. Okay, good. So we know it's important. We we get that part. We have, uh, I think we've dispelled any of those myths. And now I'm going to go out there and look for those little things, right? The, those little over. sounds that are out there. They are all um, over. Yeah, it's so fascinating. The, the next question that for me that comes to mind is, okay, I accept it. I get it. But why is it powerful? What is it? Is there something in our brains it, and I'm thinking there has to be a connection to why every time I hear that piece, that song, that that you know the Beatles tone that was playing <laughs> when I was, uh, and actually all their music was like a minute and a half long, which is hilarious. I, not a minute and a half, maybe two <laughs> minutes, but they're all their songs are so short. Yeah, yeah. But they, you know, every time I hear one of those, it conjures up some sort of emotion that's connected to that sound. So there's got to be something that makes music and sound powerful. What is it? Well, I think you hit on it that biologically, evolutionary wise, we are geared towards being very attentive to sound because evolution wise, if we hear, for instance, a loud noise behind us, we know to run. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just, that's just the thing that has allowed us to survive. <laughs> so it is really very much a part of our biological makeup to be susceptible to how sound makes us feel, uh, what it suggests we should do <laughs> right because yeah. we hear in a wider spectrum than we see so we oh wait hear, wait 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 we, we hear yeah. in a wider spectrum than we see yes yeah what does that mean so, well what it means is that there are colors and and parts of our environment that we see with our eyes that um, you know, like, for instance, we're not seeing ultraviolet rays, right? Like, we're there are things that we're not seeing in our spectrum right. of vision. Good. But, but in our ears, that spectrum of what we can hear, the, the wideness of what we can hear is a lot wider. And it'll, huh. it'll shorten as we get older because I think we stop hearing higher frequencies the older we get. Um, Especially if you have tinnitus. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that can definitely be a problem, but yes, right. Uh, as we get older, and it's different for everyone, everyone has a different rate of, you know, that difference. Uh, sure. but, but higher frequencies are going to be unheard by older people. It, it just, hmm. it, it naturally happens. Right. Um, and, and there's all sorts of reasons for that. And, you know, you can get into that with an audiologist. <laughs> But, uh, but I'm sure that has nothing to do with me listening to ACDC at the loudest decibel possible when I was uh, a, a grasshopper. But yeah. well, it might be that that's what's causing the loss of it now. <laughs> it, could, <laughs> it could very well be that 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 might make you lose it uh, uh, sooner than someone else would. But but yeah, it's 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 different for everyone. It depends on what you've been hearing all your life. How uh, 
uh, nasty or uh, kind you've been to your ears in the past. <laughs> There's a lot of things that, that sure. play into that. But yeah, in the general sense of it, we do have a wider spectrum of hearing than we do in our vision. So what that means is that we can hear things long before we see them. And so I think evolutionary wise, we have developed in order to feel with sound in a way that it takes a little bit of time to get to with the visual. So interesting. Yeah, I think that um, I, I, I mean, I don't know if this has been proven, but from what I've been researching and the people that I've spoken to and, you know, I, I really approach this from a position of being curious myself. It's why I started the podcast in the first place. I, I have, from the people I've spoken to, gotten the idea that, uh, that sound gives us emotional context. Mm -hmm. So when you're watching a movie and you're not hearing the sound, if the sound is off, you know what's going on in the movie, sort of. You do. You can follow what's going on, but you don't really care about it. You know what I mean? Right. I, don't, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but when I'm watching a movie and the sound isn't on, I'm not getting any of the emotional context. I it's... think that's a great point. Yeah. And when I'm watching a movie and they are, and when I'm, I'm trying to think of a suspenseful scene, mm -hmm. the music gets suspenseful. It kind of draws me in. It gives me a clue that, all right, get on the edge of your seat, something yeah, big's yeah. going to happen. And I'm not even thinking about the sounds that are coming at me. I'm just thinking about what I'm, I, I think I'm only interacting with the screen, but no, that music is telling me there's a bad person around yeah. the corner, right? Yes. Yeah. Don't go that way. <laughs> Don't go <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> like, can't you hear me? <laughs> The music yeah. says, yeah. but that's an interesting point. It, it'll heighten our awareness of what's yeah. going on and make it, well, more intense. It's one of those things that as far as sound design and maybe Foley and all of that kind of thing is concerned, when you don't notice it is when you know it's really being done well. Oh, ah, right? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, if it's overdone, then it it's, um, you know, it feels manipulative. <laughs> right. Right. But, yeah, I will tell you. Yeah, there's a, you know, speaking of music that conjures emotion, mm -hmm. I went to see Star Wars with my father. Yeah, when I was a when I was a little bitty, I was a little yeah, guy. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I remember this. It kind of gives you a, a perspective. We sat in the theater, and they they had the you know the the um, the fighters are flying over your head and in, into <laughs> yeah. these various scenes, right? And the music, it was kind of, it was the sound actually at that point came from behind the theater all the yep. way through to the front. And that yes. was new. That was a yeah. big deal. And my dad, I'll never forget this, literally turned around and he was a little over dramatic. And it was probably for my bit of it. He turns around <laughs> and he says, they're behind us. <laughs> what a great but, dad, first off. <laughs> yes. And I, but I remember uh -huh. I, I, now when I hear the Star Wars theme music, I, it, there's like this thing that happens and when at the beginning of every Star Wars, whether in the new Star Wars are not nearly as great as they used to be, but <laughs> they start and it, it, it immediately hits that. And it's, you know, it is the sound. It's that full experience, but it, it, it it's interesting how emotional that response is. I think it's, I think this is why, and this is why I wanted you on the show. This <laughs> is something you people, you got to think about yeah. when you're, when you're working, you know, how do you sound? I, I, I always like to share with folks that my video on YouTube can be, eh, but if the sound's bad, we're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I can, I can listen to something and get, and I'm okay if the video's not great, but as soon as the, the sound goes wrong, I, I, I do find myself less attached. Yeah. So it's hard. It's harder to get what you stuff. need from it. Yeah. Um, and also, one of the interesting things about sound is that you can listen to it while you're doing other things. So that's <laughs> why that's why podcasts and audiobooks are so popular. Radio shows, same deal, right? Like it's it's just something that you can do in your busy life while you're doing other things and still get that context and still get I, that content. I, 
I love that. And in fact, my my podcast app is full of full of stuff. Morgan and I, so Morgan Wood, for those of you that are uh, listening or watching, she's our producer. She and I are always talking about podcasts. Hey, did you hear this? Did you hear that? And and I think that it can expand your knowledge in so many ways, especially when you're doing things that you don't typically have a chance to learn something new. Yeah. Um, my problem with podcasts now is I need to shut them off at times so I can let my brain work and just sure. think. Um, because I, I I listen to podcasts so much, I I I think I was listening too much. Uh, so I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to peel that back some now, give my brain some time to work. I'm kind of the so, same way. I need a little peace in my day too. So yeah. that's just silence for me. I, yeah. I like having silence. <laughs> silence is it's a it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So in the show notes, this is great. You shared that sound can impact what you taste. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, they're doing studies on this both in the healthcare industry and in the food industry because they want to um, be able to make sustainable food options more palatable to us. Like for instance, jelly, jellyfish, right? Jellyfish are hugely plentiful and they wanna start using that as a food source. Because wait, 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 wait. They want us to eat jellyfish. Yeah. Will it sting <laughs> me when I eat it? No, no, it will not sting you, <laughs> no, no. But the idea is like, if it's prepared by a chef who knows what they're doing, they're going to make it taste really good, right? But there are lots oh. of jellyfish. Like it's just becoming, it's a huge resource that we're not huh. using, right? And okay. so if you play certain music or sounds in an eating environment, like in a restaurant or whatever, you can sort of dial in how much crunch people experience when they're having this meal. So it, it, it's just something that they've been experimenting with. It's it's like the, the interaction of our senses together. But there's a more... Um, okay, wait, 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 yeah. wait. Wait, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Crunch is not a verb I would think of with jellyfish. It, would, it depends. Jolly. Like, well, I know, but it's it's kind of like um, calamari, right? Like if you're having calamari. Oh, total right? crunch. Yeah, yeah, that's crunch, right? So yeah, that's what I'm referring to. So they're and, kind of, yeah. And calamari is is little uh, oct octopi? That's um, right, octopi, right? Is it cuttlefish? I'm not sure how they- Is that are, what they're made of? Or, but I'm they're not, really- it's cuttlefish. There are um, no bones. No, 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 that, no. Right? Oh, God, so, that's such a, I should know this. I should know this. You should. Um, I, I cannot believe you're on that's my show and is. you don't know. <laughs> it's squid. That's what it is. It's squid. Okay. It's squid. Yes. But they're small ones, right? They're, they're small. Ones. Yeah, yeah. Usually they're small. Yeah. Yeah. I so used to the think they got these of. humongous squids and would cut them up and that's how they would make calamari. But no, they're a little, little bitty. Well, creatures that parts. don't yeah, crunch. Yeah. But, okay. So, so music can make me think crunch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There are ways that you can um, create music and sounds in concert with each other to uh, influence how you experience taste. And I mean, you've probably sort of wow. experienced this in a, in a milder version. If you go have a meal at a, Italian restaurant, let's say, and they're actually playing Italian music, <laughs> you know, then it seems sure. like it's more of a experience. It seems like it's, it, you know, it depends on how loud it is. It depends on what sounds you're hearing around you and how they've arranged the space so that you either, you know, hear the background of someone beside you and their plates moving around and whatever and soft conversation that you can't hear so you don't really have to concentrate on it that kind of stuff right like it's all all of this stuff is also part of the entire restaurant dining experience but if that. you yeah but if you it, taking this into another slight direction one of the people that i interviewed on my podcast was steve keller who is the sonic strategy director for pandora and now sirius xm and everything that they own oh Wow. And, yeah, they have a advertising agency called Studio Resonate. And Studio Resonate, before the pandemic, this is, I think, in 2018, I think it was 2018, they did a promotion for the Propel 
drink. It's like a Gatorade type drink. Sure. I'm familiar yeah. with that. So what they did was they set up DJ stations and people would go to these DJ stations, listen to sounds in their ear and taste the drink as they were doing that. They had an iPad in front of them and they could dial in whether they wanted to taste the drink as more sweet or more salty. And uh -oh. the, the image on the iPad would change. So I think it would go more colorful or more black and white. And then the sounds would, in concert, change, depending on what you did with the iPad. And okay. they would taste the drink, and it would genuinely make them feel like it was sweeter or saltier. And and Steve was saying he was watching their eyes widen as he was seeing them experience this. And it's like, it's just, it's amazing to see. But yeah, our senses work in concert with each other. And so you can influence one by the other. This, and, yeah, as amazing as this sounds, it makes total sense. Yeah. It, it really does because what do our brains really do? Our brains interpret information coming to us from our senses. Mm -hmm. And if, if I could grab some of that signal going to my brain and change it in some way as it's going there, then it would, my brain would perceive something totally different. Um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually, I thought, I find that really amazing. <laughs> Not surprised yeah. because we are such, audible beings and, and in general, and I, I got to tell you a funny story. This happened this morning. <laughs> sure. So my, I have a 20, uh, 25 year old son mm -hmm. who is working from home and uh, welcome to COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm in the kitchen making my, I always make a morning uh, handmade, handmade chai tea latte. So I'm in the kitchen Ooh. I'm making my chai tea latte and he comes around the corner <laughs> and I'm, and I'm listening to a podcast. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. He comes to the corner. I'm not expecting him. I want to tell you, I almost threw up. It totally freaked me out. Yeah. But I heard him. Mm -hmm. I heard him first. And my brain is saying, there's a sound, right? And then yeah. and then he appeared and it was just the compilation really did create such an emotional reaction yeah. that um, it changed the way I was perceiving my environment. And, and, you know, that instantaneous point. And he loved it, by the way, for that the record. He thought that our... was our lizard brain <laughs> that yes is our lizard brain oh. yes that is like evolution at its finest <laughs> that's just such a funny thing all right uh -huh. not in the notes i added it before the show how can someone warm up their voice so that it is ready to go right that it you know <laughs> you're gonna you're coming onto a podcast yep. and you want to have a great voice what are some things that you can do to to get ready for that well, a couple of things. You want to be drinking water about 20 minutes before you're going to be speaking because your body needs time to absorb that liquid and make use of it. So there's that. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, but also, we, we were saying before, singing. And it doesn't matter if you can hold a tune or not. It's just using your vocal cords in a different way than speaking. And, Interesting. and it, it can help a lot. Yeah. Okay. So I have, so I have water close yes. and yes. i also cheers there's none on my desk <laughs> there we go right mm -hmm. i have gosh ah, you don't have any i've got those little uh throat lozenges that i'll oh, sometimes yeah. mm -hmm. use do you think that's a good thing like if you're going to give a speech is it a good idea to have some of those available to you where right before the speech if you don't have all this stuff and you're going to be sitting in a room before you talk is that a good idea I think it depends on the lozenge. I am not an advocate of sugar as being helpful. <laughs> oh, so interesting. So I, I don't know. I think it would depend on the person. It's it okay. really is different for everyone. So, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any comment on that because it's really <laughs> yeah. It's it's up to whoever is needing the item. But I Good. wouldn't do that. That's not something I would do. Well, I think it's a good tip. Um, what about eating before you speak? I don't. Ah, uh, and, this is and interesting. I, yeah, because your saliva gets, um, you know, excited. Your throat gets excited. Things are digesting in your body. You could have stomach sounds, you know, like there's all sorts of, yeah. That's a very interesting point, right? Mm -hmm. If you are, uh, and I did, and Morgan's going to remember this. I did this on a show a little while ago. I had something <laughs> to eat right before yeah. a show and I went, oh. I shouldn't have had that. Yeah. So you don't want to stand in, two th in front of 2,000 people and 
have what you know natural digestion stuff happen yeah no if if you can not do it i i know for instance when i go into a session i don't have coffee before i do a session because huh. when i have coffee i need cream <laughs> okay so, all right i mean it could it I think coffee itself dries out your mouth a little bit, so I'm not sure it's a good idea it's a in diuretic. general. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but the cream just puts insult to injury. So, <laughs> that's you know, and I can't drink it black. So, <laughs> I wait until after funny. my session. <laughs> yeah. So, or uh, maybe you know, down your cup of coffee a while before you walk in. But and have so a really, lot of the water. Yeah, the goal is drink some water. Go to the public bathroom, sing yeah. to the people in the other stalls. <laughs> that that would work. That would work well. But I think it's really interesting. And I and I ask this from a purely self serving perspective because sure. yeah, yeah. there are times, especially with wearing masks today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I find that my voice is kind of uh, quirky. Let's just say, yep. um, right after I take off a mask and have to have to present. So those of you that are not presenters or not talk speaking publicly and if you see that public speaker not wearing a mask don't get upset with them it may be that <laughs> they're a little worried yeah that you know the vocal cords are not going to be working it's interesting how big of a deal that is yeah there's one thing also that i would suggest if you're getting nervous because a tense body will make sure that your voice isn't quite going to be on par either. So you, you sort of need to pay attention to the stress mm. level in your body. And um, if you are stressed, then one of the things to do is just let out a breath, just sigh, like, you know, just like let it out, right? It, we all feel better after a sigh. We just do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, that's actually, great advice. Yeah, this is actually something that um, one of my interviewees, one of, one of my guests, her name is Cynthia Jai. It's spelled uh, Z-H-A-I. She is a voice instructor for basically CEOs to help them have a better voice so that they sound like they should be a CEO. <laughs> wow. Uh, and she's in Singapore. And we had a wonderful interview, and she talked a lot about these kinds of techniques and, and breathing properly and all of that kind of thing. So oh, I'm I learning think that's as fascinating. I go. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. fascinating. There is a, uh, I, I like to be a little nervous, mm -hmm. not a lot. Yeah, yeah. The energy like a, is good that yeah, way. A little, yeah, yeah, a yeah. little bit of intensity, a little bit of, you know, I I, I think it actually, to me, it, act, it activates my brain. Yes. And I become more aware than, um, I don't know, you know, maybe a little bit more able to pay attention. I, yes. um, I, I do I like know. that. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about because I know any performance I've ever done as a singer on stage, if I don't have that energy, it's the worst performance I've ever done. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I've, I've had that before where I'm about to go up to talk and I'm not nervous. And I, and I literally start thinking about all, I say, okay, I need to think about all the things that can go wrong to make me nervous. Cause I want to yeah. be a little yeah. edgy, just yeah. a little, not a lot. I don't want my, I don't want my heart in my throat, but I definitely like, yeah. I like a little, yeah. a little bit of a raised heartbeat. The energy keeps well, you hyper aware. Yes. That's, that's a good, that's a better way of putting it. Thank yeah. you. Saving me from that because I was like in this <laughs> word morass there. I couldn't come out with that. Well, Jody, this has been fun and I do appreciate this is great information mm -hmm. and no matter who you are, because at some time, especially if you're running a business, you are going to end up at a podium, right? And understanding how to communicate, you know, how to get ready for that. But also when you're looking at your marketing, when you're driving content on social, there's a voice component to it, a sound component, mm -hmm. uh, at the very least a sound, but if it's voice, creating that consistency in that branding, I think is um, understanding that and the, the importance of that is, is is big. I spent a long time picking the music for our podcast. Oh yeah, and it's important. Yeah, because I wanted something up. I actually wanted something that's, that's kind of geared towards a group that is perceived as older between mm -hmm. that 35, 40 range to 50 for a reason because mm -hmm. of the uh, the level of executive that we wanted to target. Sure. Um, and then I just want to use that sound, that music everywhere we can. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. we can. 
I liked it. I was like, I was moving to the beat. When we were, See, we were good. It was that was it. We want that to happen. <laughs> Love that. So, Jody, where can people find you? Well, if they are interested in voiceovers, which is really what I do day in, day out, uh, they can reach me at voiceoversandvocals.com. And if you are interested in the podcast, you can go to audiobrandingpodcast.com. And I actually do on that page have a download where you can get my five top tips for creating an intentional audio strategy. Oh, wow. Good stuff. Is Do you do, you do any type of uh, email blast or anything else like that? There is an email list associated with that. It goes out Good. weekly when the new podcast goes out. Um, Perfect. It, but it's pretty short. I'm not going to bother people with really huge, long emails. <laughs> Well, that's good though. I like yeah. that. So, mm -hmm. and and they can subscribe. Is that uh, audiobrandingpodcast dot com? Can they subscribe? Yeah, if they're there, there a, a pop up appears, or if they download the the top five tips that I was telling you about, that that also is a download. Like it's it puts you on the list if you're okay with that. Perfect. If you Perfect. don't want to be on the list, they can email me personally. Uh, I'm happy to pass that along. The PDF without them being on a list. They don't have to sign up if they don't want to. Good. Um, yeah. yeah. And I have a clubhouse, actually, that I do every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, where we just talk about audio branding and the power of sound. Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern mm -hmm. on Clubhouse. And so, folks, if you're on Clubhouse, dial that up. I think that you can hear all the great information that that Jody has, and I bet we've only scratched the surface. So that's a good place to probably join you and a few guests. Do you yeah. uh, co-host that with a few people or is it just I you? I do. I'm always looking for a co-host because every co-host makes the dis the discussion a different discussion because right. I have every sort of person up there. Like it, I have a club, it's called The Power of Sound. And in the club, we put the audio branding Power of Sound discussion every Wednesday at two. And I invite all sorts of people up to the stage and, and to co-moderate with me, people who are other voice actors or podcasters or audio engineers or sound designers and filmmakers oh, and healing, people who deal with sound and healing. That's also a big topic huh. as well. Voice AI. There's all sorts of things going on in there. So, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, lots of places to interact with uh, with Jody Crankle here, folks. <laughs> you please make sure you you look her up. Jody, thanks for being here today. I really have enjoyed our time, and uh, I want to stay in touch. I will. Uh, I'm going to put that Wednesday clubhouse uh, <laughs> date on my calendar. Maybe you because can I'd love to join you there. You can come moderate sometimes. I I would love that. I, I really I really would. <laughs> Clubhouse, I think, is uh, is the next big place for uh, real interaction. And so, if you don't know about Clubhouse, folks, Clubhouse is it's like an it's like a room. You get in, you have a conversation, and there is no data saved. Allegedly, you can just talk, <laughs> and um, it gives you a way to interact with some smart people. So ch definitely really check that out too. It. I, I think that the use of the voice as the social interaction and only the voice, it's so intimate. And I've met it some is. really interesting people and I've gotten to know them better in talking with them for 10 minutes than I have associating with them on LinkedIn for years. <laughs> right. It's really and intense. It is. It is a super, a super cool place. So mm. A, check out Clubhouse in general, and then Wednesday at 2 p.m., go and look up uh, Jody Krangle, and I bet you can follow her, and that way you're notified when that show goes live. All right, Jody, hang out after the show. I just sure. want to we'll want to touch base real quickly there, but thanks for being here. Thanks it's so been great to meet me. you, you yeah, too. and this is yeah. such great information. I appreciate you. <laughs> thanks. For the rest of you, um, just a reminder, we continue to do our podcast. And uh, not the podcast, what am I, I'm thinking of, uh, the webinar. We continue to do our webinar because we help people get on LinkedIn, get a great LinkedIn profile because LinkedIn is the first impression today, right? And today, 65% of people agree that an online first impression is as important as an in-person first impression. So let's control that. How do you do that? Join us on our webinar. You can see the data is right there at the bottom of the screen. It's only $37.50. 
here's the deal. This is my guarantee. You may have heard this before. If you find it's not worth your time, I'll refund the $37.50 and I'll pay you 20 bucks because the 20 bucks is for your time, right? You lose an hour of your time. You think it was worthwhile. Well, I want to pay you for that. I'm so confident of the value of this webinar that I offer that. If you're not interested, that's cool. You probably know somebody who's looking for a job. You probably know a salesperson who's trying to figure out how can they raise their exposure on LinkedIn so that it can help them get more business. You may know a business owner who may be looking for somebody to invest in their company. They need to have a great social media presence because it's all about influencing the audience. So every basically every first and third Friday, I run that webinar and you can join right there at that link. Thank you for joining us here on How's Your E-Presence. At E-Presence, we're a full-service social media agency. We do company social media, individual social media. We do consulting. We have training. Just talked about that. As well as um, we help college students that are trying to figure out how can they get from TikTok to LinkedIn. We can help with that. And we also conduct some uh, some individual um, interviews with those folks so they can, have a, they can practice at doing an interview. If you're interested in that, you can go to our website, epresence.me. That's epresence.me because it's all about you. So what do we do? Reminder here on epresence, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there on the edge. And the reason is, is we want you to know when we go live so you can interact with us and you can we get your questions answered without you having to think about it. If you're watching this show on YouTube and you still have a question, post it. We'll, we'll answer that question either there in the feed or, or we'll do it on a future show. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Um, yeah. You know what? Also, this show is going to be a podcast. We'll drop it as a podcast later. So check out that podcast channel. This show is produced. There's the website, epresence.me slash podcast. This show is produced by ePresence. Our producer, writer, and social media manager is Morgan Wood. Morgan, we appreciate everything you do for us. Until next time, for my guest, Jody Krangle, I'm Mark Galvin, and this has been How's Your ePresence?